the little drop down menu in the corner. I'm going to have your problem, I think. There we go. I can do it. There we go. Oh, clear clear answers. Answers. I have it. I have yep. it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, everybody. I know uh, lots of you have probably answered this one before, but please do let us know which country you're in. Um, it's interesting for us to watch um, as the day goes by. I see a lot more in North America now, um, fewer in Europe, and very little now left in Australia, or someone from Indonesia, so it must be late in the day for you. Okay, just give it a little bit more for people to add. Any more submissions? Brilliant, thank you very much. Okay, um, let me hide that. And the next poll we'd like you to answer is. Oops, excuse me while I do it. We're interested in what your main occupation or role is. Um, So here you are, um, please fill in. The last one, we had a lot of students, actually a lot more students this time as well. That's really interesting. Yep, students are still dominating. Any more answers? Okay, I shan't, uh, shan't labour this, so... Um, Thank you for that. And the last of my three polls. We're interested in where you're joining today's conference from. Um, mostly people seem to have been joining from home, but we are starting to see people coming from various institutions. So we're interested to know where you're joining from. And if it is from somewhere other, I'm interested to see what that might be. There we go. It looks like home is dominating today. OK, thank you very much. I shall end the poll. And now I'll hand back to Lorraine to introduce uh, the speaker for session 19. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Anna Leigh Comer. As I said, Lizzie Kitu cannot be with us because she's helping out with a baby, as midwives do. Uh, Hannah and, and, uh, and Lizzie are going to speak to us about a very interesting project that they were part of this past this past couple of months with the Laos People's Democratic Republic and uh, working with them in, with their struggles for high maternal and infant mortality due to a lack of resources as well as a lack of skilled and knowledgeable birth attendants. So the Yale School of Nursing partnered with cleanbirth.org um, with the goal of improving both the maternal and neonatal mortality rates in rural areas of southern Laos. Cleanbirth.org is a nonprofit that educates and distributes clean birth kits to Leo nurses. Midwifery faculty and students helped further the mission of Cleanbirth.org by teaching the use of clean birth kits. They also adapted and taught the World Health Organization Essentials of Newborn Care course. They taught that curriculum to the Leo nurses. This, uh, this presentation will describe how the birth kits were modified and how the World Health Organization curriculum was adapted to fit the training needs of nurses working in Salavan province in Laos. So without further ado, here is Hannah. <gasps> Have we lost Hannah? Oh dear. Um, Chris, we're going to have to sing and dance again. There's been, uh, we've lost Hannah temporarily. Um, this has happened occasionally. We had another speaker who dropped out um, 
in fact twice in, in a session where I was facilitating it does happen that's the that's what happens with technology and there's no reason to say it won't pick on you when you're supposed to be presenting Does anyone here have any uh, experience of working in uh, in Southeast Asia? Well, we're just waiting for Hannah to rejoin us. Perhaps she could tell that tell us about it in chat. Does anyone have any experience working um, with uh, cleanbirth.org or similar types of projects like the kits or, or projects that they've they've used before? There's Hannah. Hang on, I'm just going to bump her up. Welcome back. I'm so sorry. I let me explain. So I'm at my school, and I because I thought the internet would be more reliable, and I'm I guess it's not. So my apologies. I'm reconnected, and I hopefully won't have any more interruptions. Well, it's over to you now. So take it away. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Wonderful. and then get started. Okay, so um, my name is Hannah Lacomer. Um, my co-presenter, Lizzie Kitwe, is, um, we did this project together. Um, we both, she is away helping, supporting her friend who is in labor. Um, she wanted to be here, so she apologizes for missing it, but I will take over for both of us. So we both are registered nurses and are finishing up our studies um, to become certified nurse midwives um, at Yale School of Nursing in New Haven, Connecticut. And so um, this presentation is about our trip. So we took a trip to Laos. Um, and we adapted clean birth kits and taught WHO's Essentials of Newborn Care curriculum. Um, we taught that to nurses in southern Laos. So this is a presentation about that project that we did. So we can go to the next slide. I don't know how if I have. There we go. Um, all right. So the goal of this trip was to teach the components of WHO's Essential of Newborn Care to rural nurses in Laos and also other healthcare workers. Um, we did this in conjunction with three other goals. It was a cultural assessment of birth and newborn services in southern Laos, and as well as a cultural assessment of the use of the clean birth kits and redesigning the clean birth kits. And lastly, we were there to assess and teach other birth skills as necessary. So this first slide is just a slide showing where Laos is. Um, you can see it borders Thailand, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Um, all right, we can go on to the next one. Um, so just some general information about Laos. Um, it's about 7 million people live there, um, roughly about the size of Utah for those of the people in the United States. Um, the average life expectancy, 64 for males, 67 for females. Um, they have a diverse ethnic group, predominantly in the southern region, where we were focusing our attention. Um, and there is some other languages spoken there, but Laos is the main la language. Um, and the terrain is really um, mountainous in the southern part um, with, and uh, with lots of forests and um, they have very rainy seasons as well. All right, next slide. 
So just some of the maternal and newborn statistics in Laos. Um, so they have about 180,000 births a year. This is 2012 statistics. Um, and the neonatal mortality rate is 27 per 1,000 live births. Um, and they have a total maternal death was 400. Um, and you can see their C-section rate is very low um, with a fertility rate also of three. You can go on to the next slide. So here's just um, some other statistics about care, maternal and reproductive care. So you can see that there's a very minimal um, prenatal care. So in this, um, this study that it, it's um, from the WHO, um, you can see that 37% of women, and this is in the Laos population in general, received only so, was only received some prenatal care, so and this was as four more visits. Um, only 40% were having skilled birth attendants at their delivery, um, with only 40% receiving any postpartum care. And um, there's only a, they, in Laos, there's only a 26% ex, uh, exclusive breastfeeding rate. Um, they're finding there's a big push right now to increase breastfeeding and improve the education about the importance of breastfeeding. All right, next slide. Um, so here's just a little bit more information about what are the challenges for improving these maternal and newborn statistics. So as you can see, um, a lot of these uh, newborn and maternal deaths are from preventable causes. So you can see infection-related, nutritional-related, um, medication-related. So that's why we tried to aim our focus for these trainings on some of the basic um, sanitation information and trying to focus on clean birth kits and getting skilled birth attendants with basic birth knowledge. So we can move on. So now moving on to just the region that we went to and are have focused on. So this is the Salivan province. Um, it is a very mountainous area um, that's very minimal infrastructure as well with minimal roads um, and access to health care. As you can see, the life expectancy is less than the general population for Laos, so 56 years for males and 59 years for women. Um, it's a very agriculture-based uh, area, so 80% of people are getting um, supporting their families through farming with lots of fishing and other, um, other like fishing things to, to support their families. So just focusing on some of the maternal and newborn information. So in general, it's very hard to get statistics about the general maternal and newborn health in this area because of things like lack of infrastructure. Um, the area also has a very high percentage of different ethnic groups with um, very different languages. So there's um, a language barrier a lot of times for people going in trying to do um, consensus and information data gathering. Um, so just general information. So the average age of marriage is 15. Let me get down to, um, so in this area, women are least likely to receive any form of prenatal care um, and in the southern regions rather, and in the northern and central regions, they're more likely to receive some prenatal care. So. Um, in the southern provinces, if prenatal care was accessed, it most commonly occurred in in the months of three to five months of pregnancy and was least likely to occur at the end of pregnancy, so in the eighth or ninth month of pregnancy. Um, in one study that we looked at that was looking at this information, um, they revealed that the overall obstetric competencies of the skilled birth attendants was um, from 51% to 84% with the exception of management of third stage of labor. So, and the skilled birth attendants were only 22% competent. I'm not exactly sure what this study used as competency, but it just gives a general idea that there's 
minimal training for the skilled birth attendants that are attending births for these women in this region. Um, so you can also see that most women are having home births. Um, there's higher fertility rates in this area. Um, and that most women are very far away from um, clinics or hospitals and that they have to travel over an hour, maybe days, to even access a clinic or a hospital if they were to need medical attention or more interventions. All right. So just, so that's the background about why there was a need for us for the project that we did, so why, why there's a need in Laos, and specifically in that region. So Yale School of Nursing partnered with cleanbirth.org. Um, and so this, is, this organization was founded in 2012 um, by Christine Zolota. She, um, so this organization provides clean birth kits and training to nurses and village volunteers in the Sullivan province. They partnered with the Association for Community Develop, Development, who has been providing um, community and health education and resources for the last 10 years. Um, so the clean birth kits. So the clean birth kits provide materials for clean birthing surfaces, clean hands, clean cord clamping, and cord cutting. Um, cleanbirth.org orders these kits from the company I, Isaiah, as you can see on the label there, and you, um, they modify the contents based on the feedback that they got from nurses and the Association for Community Development. Um, so they based it on what they, the needs were for the area. So in July when we went, these clean birth kits contained a bar of soap, one disposable under pad, chuck pad, um, a small sterile blade for cutting the umbilical cord, one plastic clamp for the umbilical cord, and hand-drawn instructions on how to use the kit. And so based on the feedback from our trip, these birth kits were modified, and I'll discuss those changes later. All right, so the partnership between Yale School of Nursing and Clean Birth started in 2014. We were the first trip to go um, in partnership with Clean Birth. So the goal, uh, we went with the goal of reducing maternal and newborn mortality rates. So the Yale School of Nursing Midwifery Specialty Coordinator, Dr. Cecilia, Cecilia Jevitt, who is pictured in this picture along with me and Lizzie, um, spear, so Dr. Jevitt spearheaded the partnership with cleanbirth.org. All right, and the next slide is just another photo on our way to, from Thailand to Laos. Can skip ahead to the next one. So now we're just going to talk about what we did. So you can see the nurses, the, the main picture is of the nurses we trained in one of our trainings, and then Lizzie and I doing some role play. So we can go on to the next slide. So to prepare for this trip, um, before traveling to Laos, uh, Lizzie and I became certified in the American Academy Neonatal Resuscitation Program. Um, so this was an online course with a certification. Um, in addition, we gathered all of the materials for the training, including picture cards, clean birth kits, four infant resuscitation mannequins, and five bag ventilators. And these were all donated by Dr. Jevitt, um, and we left them in Laos for future trainings. Um, because of the language barrier, we wanted to make sure we had adequate picture materials and um, hands-on tools to use that we could demonstrate for these trainings. And so we also, in addition to that, um, did fundraisers to gather um, for the trainings so we could um, cover the cost for the nurses to get to the trainings and um, pay for the clean birth kits as well. Okay, so for the trainings, what we really focused on, we did um, special, one of the, the um, focuses was on going over um, how to use the clean birth content. So going through what each piece of the clean birth kit was to be used for and how the, the order of use and how to use them. Um, we really focused on hand washing, 
sanitation, and hygienic birth settings and practices. And we really focused on making sure people understood that we want women to have a birth partner with them um, and have someone who is trained how to use these kits to be helping the birthing woman, the birthing mother. So to teach those, we, um, we the Yale School of Nursing team had help with uh, from the Association Community Development members. Um, they provide the I'm going to start short, call the Association for Community Development, ACD. So the members of ACD, they provided translation for us for these trainings. So in total, we taught 67 nurses, health staff, and district health officials over three days of training um, to teach. So for the teaching of the WHO Essential Newborn Care course, um, we had to modify it to make it appropriate for Laos's um, setting because the WHO's essential newborn care was meant for a clinic setting. So we had to adjust it because we were using the only the tools we had within the birth kit and were um, assuming that a lot of women would be getting birth at home or in clinics where there was minimal resources. Um, so some of the things we had to adjust was not was taking out the resuscitation supplies, the thermometers, the clamps that the WHO's newborn course included. Um, we omitted eye care, cesarean birth, instrumental delivery, and with the resuscitation, we really focused on basic stimulation and drying um, and clean, making sure the baby was warm, and then we also focused on only bag and uh, focused on bag and mask uh, resuscitation as well. All right. So for teaching all of these things, we used role play to explain how to use the clean birth kits, how to cut and clean the umbilical cord. We also included positions for breastfeeding and how to provide skin-to-skin -skin contact to ensure proper um, that the newborn was staying warm. Um, and after we did demonstrations, the nurses would then practice their skills in groups, and we would go around and um, help provide feedback for them. So in addition, um, and so as you can see, both male and female nurses took turns playing different roles. Um, and they got feedback, yeah, okay. So in addition, um, we also based the training on, based on um, things that the nurses told us they wanted to know. So we did a lot of um, information, we gave a lot of information about physiologic birth. Um, we did a lot of role playing and um, uh, lot of instruction on breastfeeding and skin-to-skin -skin care, the importance of having a birth partner again, um, because often it is um, one of the traditions is women do give birth by themselves in Laos, and so we really wanted to emphasize that role again. Um, they also asked about management of nuchal cord and breech birth, which we covered in, in brief. Um, and then again, um, another thing we really tried to focus on in these trainings was data collection on the clean birth kit use to make sure that we are understanding if they're being utilized properly in the order that they should be and what the outcomes are. Um, so this is an ongoing problem. We're having more and more, um, there have been more trainings on the data collection and um, data review for the actual clean birth kit use since we went last July. So in addition to the three days of training with the nurses and the health um, professionals, we also did three village visits. And as you can see, it was very rainy. Um, there, it was muddy. And we actually were supposed to go to another, a fourth village. But because the river was so high, we were not able to actually reach that village. Um, so as you can see, understand from our own experience, we had difficulty accessing some of these more rural areas. So let alone any mother who needs to come in or use the roads, she would have trouble getting, getting to and from. Um, 
And then you can see these are pictures of moms with their babies that actually were born using the clean birth kits. So here is some pictures of a nurse doing a training for some skilled birth attendants who, um, from different villages. Um, so this nurse is, having, is going through how to use clean birth kits um, and distributing clean birth kits to these birth attendants and where they will use it in their own villages. So the, from this trip, what we learned, um, we gathered a lot of information about birth practices. Um, so we learned that sometimes women do birth by themselves and that we wanted to end one thing, and that helped us emphasize the role of the birth partner. Um, we also learned cultural taboos surrounding birth, and which one, of, one example of this was that blood, touching someone else's blood in Laos is considered bad or um, can cause sickness. And so, to, um, and so that is often a reason why, um, why someone is not wanting to help with a birth. So um, from this, we learned that we need to modify the birth kits because we can adjust the contents of the birth kit to make it so there is not contact with blood. Um, so we added a pair of gloves to help with this um, to help with this taboo that we learned about. Um, we also learned about the immense difficulty that um, women have in Southern Laos accessing healthcare when they need it. And then we learned about the challenges with data collection due to just access, the nurses having trouble getting to certain villages dur during different times of the year based on the rainy season um, and uh, other issues just due to logistics. So after this training, we adjusted the clean birth kits to, like I said, um, include a pair of gloves. We also added, instead of having one under pad, we added a second under pad that could be used to dry the baby. Um, because one of the things we learned was that they oftentimes, women don't have clean, clean blankets to wrap around their baby, and so we figured this would be a way for them to dry their baby and then apply blankets that they can use. We also learned that um, the nurses gave us feedback that they wanted another uh, clamp instead of just one because that would reduce um, the amount of blood drained from the placenta and again reduce the amount of contact or exposure to blood um, the birth attendant might have. And then we kept in a bar of soap, one blade, um, and we changed the instructions from being pictures, um, from being drawings to picture instructions um, because the nurses gave us feedback that that would be more helpful. All right, so goals for the future. Um, we want to develop a sustainable model for clean birth kits to be supplied to Laotian women. So right now they are being provided by donations um, that cleanbirth.org receives. So we hope we can find a way that these clean birth kits can be um, supplied without them being relied on from donation money. Also, we're working on improving the monitoring and evaluation so we can understand if what we're doing is helping. We want to train more nurses. Um, there is definitely a need for more education for these nurses surrounding birth and maternal and newborn care. And then we also want to continue to tailor the WHO's Essential of Newborn Care curriculum to the Laotian culture to make sure that it is applies to them and that they can use it. All right, and that is it. And you can see all the resources that we used. And then now I can take questions. Anna, um, Layla has asked a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, the first one was okay. about the training you and um, Lizzie took. So it was about, uh, she was asking about the training that you took before you went. Was it NRPANS stable course? Is that the one that you took? No, it's the neonatal resuscitation program put on by the American Academy of Pediatrics, um, or I believe I have it in my 
presentation. Um, it's not the stable course. And then Layla also asked about uh, in the kits, uh, did you consider any emergency uh, medical or devices for PPH or complicated births? So no, because we um, don't. So these clean birth kits are supposed to be used by birth attendants. They're also stocked in the clinics with the nurses. Um, and adding in medication would then require someone um, who has, I'm not sure exactly the licensure and practice, but we, um, that would require us prescribing. And I'm not exactly sure how we would include that, because these are just very basic medical supplies to enable sanitary birthing conditions. All right, and remember, anyone, if you, if you would like to uh, ask a question using the microphone, just raise your hand, and I will give you the microphone. Or put your questions in chat. And I see Amaryllis just wrote um, in the link that um, is the link to cleanbirth.org where it has all the information about the clean birth kits. I'm interested in knowing how you got involved with a project like this. It's it really fascinating. So it was Yes. Um, so Yale School of Nursing has international an international um, program, and they have many different international trips. Um, and so with Seal and Kristen um, Zaloda, the founder of CleanBirth.org, met and came up with this project. And so um, as a student, you get opportunities to apply to participate in these trips. And so both Lizzie and I applied and were selected to participate in this trip. And we both um, took advantage of this amazing opportunity to do something, to start this wonderful project of improving education and birth conditions for this very high needs area. And for those of you that don't know, Cecilia Jevitt is a member of our board with the Virtual International Day of Midwife as well. So we, 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 we heard about the project from her side, so it's kind of nice to hear it from your side. Thank you very much. Yeah. Are, are you planning on going back, or what? So it, each year now, the plan is to have two new midwifery students go and um, continue to do trainings with nurses and also fur further these goals with cleanbirth.org. Um, of improving maternal and neonatal mortality and morbidity. So um, the project is going to continue. At Liz, we, we joked on our way back that we would have a, a reunion, Laos reunion, in five years, ten years from now. But um, the plan is that this will be continue to be a partnership between CleanBirth.org and Yale School of Nursing, and it will be an opportunity for student midwives to go and participate in this wonderful project. It seems to me, and maybe Chris will remember, we had a presentation a couple of years ago about a similar project that uh, happened in Haiti after multiple disasters at, at, in Haiti. And I, I know in the last presentation there was a lot of talk about what's going in, on in Nepal. So uh, there'd be a great need for many of these uh, clean birth kits around the world, I should imagine. I do, remember, I do remember something about Haiti, but I can't remember the detail, unfortunately. But yes, I do remember that, Lorraine. Yeah. Actually, so, I think it's our, next, our next facilitator was, I think it was Catherine Salem who was part of that project. Oh, right, right oh. okay. OK, sorry, Hannah, go ahead. Oh, no, so the Clean Birth Kits have been, it is a company that you, um, makes them for different countries. And they are distributed 
and modified for different areas. Um, so I know there's some use of them in Cambodia um, and other places around the world. Um, and what's really nice about this project that what I think is helpful for distributing the clean birth kits is doing it with this education part of it and adapting um, and making the WHO Essentials of Newborn Care culturally um, uh, adapted to the area and it's a, a nice partnership to give supplies with the education. Oh, I see Catherine's typing. Nicaragua, okay. Yeah. Uh, there was one in Haiti. I can't remember which one that one is. Really interesting. Are there any other questions for Hannah? Go ahead. Ask your question. Catherine says they did theirs through the olive tree and did training to make very cool. See some more, some more typing coming through. Yes. So what advice would you give someone who is planning a project like this? I think it is helpful to, at least for us, this was our first year going and doing this. And we went with less of an agenda because we really needed to g gather information and hear what was needed from the nurses and the women in the villages. And I think that really helped us get a sense of where this direc the direction of this project could go. Um, so I, th I think that was helpful for some, like if you're starting and wanting to do something in a high needs area, making sure that you listen to what the, that specific population needs and then start working and adjusting your, your goals to what they say their needs are. Um, because now um, the future trainings have a much better focus and um, structure, I think, to them because we went in and decided we, we before we just come teaching all of this information, Let's let's find out what is really needed to be taught and where where we're starting from. I think that's a really valuable lesson. I see Suk has a good question there. Can you see that? Yes. So the question is, you um, I said that these women have little or no access to prenatal care, and do these women wish they had access? Um, is there a demand for it? And in general, I think that they they would a, they would like to receive prenatal care, but not, um, I guess I'm not exactly sure how to answer that in that I think they do prefer to birth at home because that is where they have been birthing and um, you, they feel comfortable there. Um, but I think that there is a desire for them to know, have I mean, there's a desire for access and um, to these basic clean birth kits, and so um, I don't know. There isn't much motivation right now for them to go to the clinics to receive prenatal care, but I think, but with education about why they need prenatal care, a lot of women did express a desire to have checks, and when we were in the villages. But they also were very clear to us that it is very hard for them to access it. So they, it's not even on their, um, it's not something that they even think about wanting or demanding it because it is so challenging for them to get there because if something, if they did need to get there, they're having to find someone to give them a ride because most most people don't have cars. Um, people get around on motorbikes or trucks that they pay someone else to get them to. So I think it's a little bit um, 
what they really want is access to clean supplies, which which is what we were providing with clean the clean birth kits. Um, but I don't know if with more access how that would change. So it's a very good question, and I something that we should definitely um, you know look into when we're going there and asking. Follow-up question to that. And Amaryllis has also let us know about uh, it was the midwives for Haiti. I knew there was something, and it was different, but along the idea about providing the supports for women in challenging situations. Thank you. So follow-up question was, um, Sookberg is working on a project um, I have not heard of the safe pregnancy kits. Um, that is something that I will definitely, we will definitely look into. But no, we have not um, seen it. And I, I, I would need to look at it to see if it would be, um, if it would work. Um, there's a lot of challenges in working in this region in Laos. Um, they have many obstacles to receiving care and basic necessities. So I don't know um, I don't know how it would apply or if it could be adjusted to be used. So I would need to look into that. And we're so that's in very the interesting. It is really interesting. We're now in the under five minutes uh, left in the time allotted for this presentation. So uh, last questions, please. Oh, look, you've just got a colleague in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, I'm going to give you my email. That would be okay. great. And his email in the, in the chat. If you have questions that occur to you later or you want to make connections, it would be great. Yes, and thank you so much for this opportunity. This was wonderful. I'm very glad to share this. And thank you very much, Hannah. And best of luck to Lizzie and her friend, please. Pass that along from all of us. A good day to be I born, will, same day as a, as a princess. That's pretty neat. Um, <laughs> As I was telling you before, I, I had to leave early last year because my granddaughter was born. So <laughs> it's kind of exciting time. So thank you very Always much. Always in the life of a midwife. <laughs> <laughs> Always in. So if there's no further questions, we're going to be uh, we're going to be moving on. And uh, thank you again, Hannah. I'm going to turn thank off the you. recording. Okay.